What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafty Workshop video. In this week's video, I'm going to show you how I built this modern media console or TV stand using nothing but plywood and a little bit of brass. Let's go ahead and get started with the project. One of my goals with this project, obviously besides just building a media console for us to use, was to use up some materials I already had on hand since I'm going to be moving my shop here pretty soon. And I decided to embrace the all plywood look on this build since I had a bunch of plywood on hand and made the case of this cabinet out of a 5x5 sheet of 3 quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. And I started by breaking down that 5x5 sheet over at the table saw. Also, I do have plans available for this cabinet if you're interested. And those plans include a detailed cut list and cutting diagram. And I sized the cabinet to fit standard home theater receivers and it also has plenty of room for video game consoles and other electronics. And I'll have a link in the video description in case you're interested in those plans. For the shelves in the cabinet, I decided to go with double layered half inch Baltic birch plywood, again because it's what I had on hand. And I cut these pieces to size and then laminated them with glue and three quarter inch brad nails to create the one inch thick shelves. So while the glue dried, I continued working on the cabinet and I decided to try sliding doors on this cabinet, something I hadn't tried before, but something I've seen my buddy Chris from Four Eyes use a bunch. To make these types of doors work, you need to cut two grooves along the full length of the top and bottom panels of the cabinet. I used quarter inch plywood for the doors, so I set up my dado stack at a quarter of an inch. And by the way, this is a new Datanator dado stack from Infinity Tools and it cuts super cleanly. For the grooves on the bottom panel, I set the blade height to an eighth of an inch and set the fence a quarter of an inch away from the blade. And after making this first cut, I verified the fit with a piece of quarter inch plywood and then moved the fence over another quarter of an inch to create a second groove. For the grooves on the top panel, I raised the blade height to a little bit over a quarter of an inch so that I could easily add and remove the doors after the cabinet was assembled. I can then repeat the same process of cutting the grooves on the top panel. For the joinery on the cabinet, I decided to go with rabbits, and the main reason for this was that it allowed me to cut those grooves for the doors the full length of the top and bottom panels, and then the rabbits would cut away the end of the grooves, leaving me with a perfectly clean end to the grooves at the sides of the cabinet. I set up my dado stack to a width of 23 30 seconds, which is the actual width of 3 quarter inch plywood, and a depth of half an inch, and after confirming the fit with a few test cuts on some scraps, I cut the rabbits on the ends of the panels. Or at least I started to make the cuts before realizing that I actually hadn't cut these panels to their final length yet. So I pulled out my track saw and cut the panels to length quickly, double checking that everything was square, and then finally, with the panels cut to length, I could head back over to the table saw and cut the rabbits into the ends of the panels. Before gluing up cabinets like this, I like to sand all of the inside faces since it's a heck of a lot easier to do this prior to assembly. And on Baltic birch and other veneered plywoods, I usually start and finish at 180 grit since they're pretty smooth from the factory and I don't want to risk sanding through that thin veneer. Assembly went fairly smoothly, which is one of the reasons I love using rabbits and dados. They're pretty much self-squaring. And I did have a little trouble with the top panel bowing under the clamping pressure, but I added a scrap piece of 2x4 in the center to help keep this from happening. While the glue dried, I could cut the center divider to size based on the actual dimensions of the finished cabinet. And I was able to get the cabinet top and bottom, sides, and the center divider all out of that one 5x5 sheet of plywood with almost no waste, so it worked out really well. I decided to attach the center divider with brass pins on the top edge and screws on the bottom edge. So after marking out the location of the divider and verifying it was square, I drilled some 8th inch holes and then added some 8th inch brass rod using CA glue. An epoxy would have probably been better here, but I think the CA glue will hold up just fine. I would recommend using painter's tape to catch the excess glue or epoxy as this CA glue really soaked into the birch veneer and required a dangerous amount of sanding to remove it with me worrying about sanding through the veneer the whole time. So on the bottom of the cabinet, I initially used these trim head screws to attach to the divider, but I ended up going back and changing them out for some power head screws, which have quite a bit more holding power. To strengthen the rabbits and give them a nice subtle accent, I decided to pin them with brass as well, and I just created a quick little drilling jig and then cut the eighth inch rod to size using my portaband. Also, while I'm cutting the brass, I wanted to take a second to thank my YouTube members their monthly support really helps keep this channel going, and I love being able to connect with my members with the behind the scenes videos I make for them. If you're interested in becoming a member, check out the card in the upper right corner or the link in the video description. 
and thanks again for you guys' support. When attaching the brass this time, I did use epoxy, and I also added some painter's tape before driving in the rods. And you can see how cleanly the tape can be removed after the epoxy cures, leaving no excess epoxy behind to clean up. And brass is soft enough to cut with pliers, although it does require some force. And I've used a flush trim saw in the past, but it will wreck the teeth on saws with very fine teeth, so just be careful there. After cutting the rod with the pliers, I sanded everything flush, again using 180 grit sandpaper to avoid sanding through the veneer. Next, I cut the back panel and doors to size from quarter inch plywood, and I decided to add a little design to the doors using my Inventables X-Carve to allow my remote to communicate with my home theater receiver even with the door in front of it. This actually ended up being a little bit tricky, so instead of cutting these panels oversized, I tried cutting them too close to the final size and kept having issues with my dust shoe running into my clamps, which caused the X-Carve to go off course. After finally getting this figured out, I realized I had too many lines in the design, which caused the door to be extremely floppy in the center, which caused the door to lift on the final pass and screw up yet another piece. So finally, I removed half of the lines from my design and ended up with a pretty much perfect door, and it only took four failed attempts to get it right. <laughs> so after cutting the doors on the X-Carve, I removed the tabs using a flush trim bit at the router table, and then I could install the doors. And you can see that they just slide up into the groove on the top panel, just enough to be able to clear the surface of the bottom panel, and then drop into the groove on the bottom panel. And the doors slide surprisingly easily, even without any finish or wax, and this is definitely a technique I'm gonna be using more in the future. With the cabinet carcass and doors fairly complete, I went back to the shelves and got them cleaned up and cut to size using the table saw and my Rockler crosscut sled. Anytime I'm laminating two pieces like this, I always leave them oversized to allow me to trim off any excess glue squeeze out and just to clean up anywhere where the two pieces didn't meet up perfectly. Also, I always sneak up on the fit on adjustable shelves like this as you really don't want them to be too narrow. So to drill the adjustable shelf pin holes, I used a jig I made probably two years ago now and I keep telling myself I'll replace it with a more durable commercial version when it wears out, but it still hasn't. Also, I've learned that you don't really need shelf pin holes every inch, especially on a cabinet like this with only one shelf. So after drilling the holes, I installed some shelf pins and dry fit everything. It was all looking good, so I went ahead and got the back panel installed. So before installation, I drilled some holes in the back panel to allow cables to pass through, and it really helps reduce tear out when drilling through plywood with a Forstner bit like this if you drill most of the way through and then flip the panel and finish drilling from the other side. To install the back panel, I just used glue and brad nails, and you'll notice I only have the back panel on the left two thirds of the cabinet. That's because my home theater receiver will live in the right third, and I didn't want anything obstructing my access to the wiring coming from the back of the receiver. To clean up these back panels, I like to chamfer them, which give them a really nice finished look, and also trims them flush with the cabinet all in one pass. So with that, the cabinet was pretty much done, so the last part to work on was the base. I kept it really simple with the base and again embraced that plywood ingrain look. So I took one long strip of 3 quarter inch maple plywood that I've had laying around for probably a few years now, and I cut it in half and laminated it to form the center beam of the base. After the glue dried, I trimmed the center beam to width along with two strips of 3 quarter inch Baltic birch plywood, and then cut all the pieces to length at the miter saw. To connect the base parts to each other, as well as to connect the base to the cabinet itself, I used some pocket holes, so next I drilled a series of pocket holes in the pieces prior to assembly. Assembling the base was as simple as adding glue to the parts, clamping them together, and then adding the pocket screws. And also, I think this shot really illustrates why I love this assembly table. All of my most used screws are stored right below the top, and having a big, flat clamping surface like this makes assembly super simple. While the glue dried on the base, I could get the cabinet and doors sanded up to 180 grit. While I'm sanding, let's take a second to talk about the sponsor of this week's video, FilterBuy. As you might have heard in last week's video, my wife and I have recently moved into a new house, and one of the most important things that I do when moving into a new house is changing out the filters. And a service like FilterBuy makes this really easy since they allowed me to have high quality air filters delivered to my doorstep quickly, and now new filters will arrive in regular intervals. And I'm not great at remembering to change my filters, but it's pretty hard to forget to install new filters when they're sitting on my kitchen counter. With over 600 filter sizes in stock, FilterBuy is sure to have you covered too. And by signing up for auto delivery, you can save an extra 5% on 
Plus, FilterBuy has free shipping on every order. Another great thing about FilterBuy is they can custom make filters for almost any weird or hard to find filter size you might need. And since FilterBuy's factory is located in Talladega, Alabama, it means your new filters will arrive at your doorstep quickly. To learn more about FilterBuy and to get signed up, check out the link in the video description below. And thanks again to FilterBuy for sponsoring this week's video. After sanding, I moved on to finishing the cabinet. And for the doors, I decided to add a little pop of color and spray painted them a pale pink and green color. I think these light colors really play nicely with the light Baltic birch plywood. For the finish on the cabinet and base, I used a water-based polyurethane, which I really prefer on maple, birch, and other lighter woods, as it doesn't add any yellowness to the color. And this finish is what's referred to as water white, as it adds basically no color, which really enhances that pale birch plywood look, in my opinion. After the finish dried, all that was left to do was attach the base to the cabinet, which I did using inch and a quarter pocket hole screws, and also made sure to clamp the base in place when adding the screws to keep it from moving around. And with that, this media console was basically finished and all that was left to do was load up my electronics. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I've really been digging the exposed plywood look here lately. Again, I will have plans available for this project in case you're interested in building one of these for yourself. I'll have a link to those down in the video description below. Also in the video description below, I'll have links to all the tools and materials I use in this project. And last, in case this is your first time here, go ahead and get subscribed. I put out new project videos like this pretty much every week. Also ring that little notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. All right, thanks again for watching everybody. And until next time, happy building.